Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be something a little different. We all know the strongest and most meta classes, whether it be from playing, looking at guides, paying attention to the ladder, or just watching streams. Well, today we're going to be spotlighting some of the lesser represented specs. These specializations all have the potential to reach rank one ratings. So if you feel like trying something new or just want some more information on those specs that you don't really see too often, this is the video for you. The first spec that we're going to be taking a look at is Arcane Mage. Arcane is one of those specs that is never really in the spotlight. It's just always overshadowed by its frost and fire counterparts. What differentiates Arcane from the other two mages specs is its mobility. Thanks to displacement, a mage is able to blink and then teleport back anytime before 10 seconds has passed. This ability can make for some great playmaking, especially when looking for crowd control on healers hugging that pillar. Greater Invisibility is another ability unique to Arcane Mages. We all know mages standard invisibility. Well, the greater version not only acts activates instantly, but also offers a 60% DR. On top of that, Arcane also gets mass invisibility from their PvP talents. What this does is offer a 5 second banish for yourself and your entire team. The power of this is immense and it's incredibly fun to use. You can help your healer avoid CC, secure CC yourself, or even avoid that 500k chaos bolt that's about to hit you. Arcane's damage all revolves around Arcane Missiles and Arcane Barrage, and if left to free cast, can deal some serious damage. What are Arcane Mage excels at though is facing melee. Thanks to the talent Chrono Shift, Arcane not only slows the target, but also speeds themselves up at the same time. Pair this with Displacement and Shimmer, and you'll have Demon Hunters looking like Ret Paladins. So, high damage, good mobility, slows, team utility, Arcane seemingly has it all. So what's holding it back? Well, Arcane struggles as its entire arsenal is bound to one school of magic. Frost and Fire, if locked on Polymorph, can still do damage and if locked on damage, can still go for CC, which is not the case for Arcane and something often overlooked. Also, defensive-wise, Fire has Cauterize, Frost has Cold Snap, while Arcane gets nothing purely defensive. Arcane thrives when paired up with a Disc or Resto Druid in 2v2. In terms of 3v3 compositions, Arcane, when paired with Destro Warlocks and Mistweaver, is played at rank 1 ratings, so you could say the Arcane Dream is still well and truly alive. Following up from Arcane Mage, we have Demonology Warlock. Demo is again something that you don't see too often, and that's purely because, as we all know, Destro is just way overtuned. Demo offers a fun alternative to the Destro Warlock playstyle though, focusing its damage more around your pets. Demo has also struggled with the addition of Reaping Flames, which could be abused on their consistent Wild Imp summons, resulting in the spec being almost unplayable. Well, now with Reaping Flames no longer working on pets, Demo is again starting to see some play. For Demo right now, there are two different specs. The one you see on screen offers more pet damage and higher consistent pressure, but there is an alternative build that I'll put on screen now, which resolves around buffing your Demonic Tyrant, which can result in some ridiculous burst damage. If you thought Destro was bad, just wait until you see a fully buffed Tyrant. Demonology's major flaw as of late, apart from forcing everybody who faces them to turn off nameplates, has been just how squishy they are. Not having the mastery of Destro or even Demon Armor results in them being a lot easier to focus down. But again, thanks to the addition of targetable corruption, you're able to reach high volumes of versatility to counteract that weakness. We've mostly seen Demonology being played to high ratings in 2v2, when paired up with a class like Paladin offering a nice alternative to those Warlocks that just don't find destruction fun. Certain players have also found success in 3v3, pairing up with classes like Hunters or Elemental Shamans, focusing on a more setup-oriented type of playstyle. If we do see any Destro Warlock nerfs before Shadowlands hits, expect to see a lot more Demonology Warlocks in your games. Alright, the next spec that we're going to be delving into is Holy Priest. Holy is becoming more and more popular now that people are starting to see its strengths. Holy Priest has some of the most unique and overpowered abilities in the game. Greater Fade allows you to avoid all spells and damage, while Holy Ward has a 30 second cooldown with 30 second uptime and will immune the next CC. Not only that, Holy Priests also bring a physical range stun from their Holy Word Chastise, with the potential to reduce the cooldown drastically, meaning Holy Priest can consistently stun off diminishing returns. What defines Holy Priest though is their trademark Greater Heal. Greater Heal is one of the most ridiculous abilities we've seen in Arena to date, healing for 65% of a target's max health with its major drawback, of course, being its extremely long cast time. However, now, thanks once again to targetable corruption, Holy Priests are able to reach inhumane levels of haste, 
reducing what was once a three second cast time down to under one second. Despite this, Holy Priest has some obvious flaws, mainly are its lack of any other healing sources other than Greater Heal. Holy Priest seals outside of Greater Heal literally do nothing. If you can't cast, you or your teammates are just going to die. Currently, Holy Priest is shining in 2v2, paired up with a Destro Warlock, offering that double threat situation where you can't afford to solely focus on interrupting either one. If you're struggling to keep your teammates alive as a Discipline Priest, Holy offers a more healing focused approach. So if you haven't given it a go yet, make sure you try it out in 2v2. Grappling in next, we've got Outlaw Rogues. Outlaw had its time as the go-to rogue spec a few seasons back, but since then has just been living in Assassination's shadow, despite that Outlaw offers a very fun and different type of playstyle. While Assassination has high consistent damage, Outlaw focuses more around buffing your team damage with abilities like Tricks of the Trade. Having their main stun being ranged and having extra ranged on melee attacks gives them a very unique feel. Having old abilities like Gouge still in their toolkit further allows players to hone into that CC setup playstyle that they once loved. Combine this with True Bearing coming from their unique role the bonus ability means that they can get their stuns to have basically no cooldown along with also reducing the cooldown of their offensive and defensive abilities. Outlaw has not seen much play as of late due to its lack of damage. It has less burst than subtlety and less consistent damage than assassination. Combining this with its lack of a mortal strike effect means that Outlaw is better suited in melee cleaves. And with just how dominant Rogue Mage is right now, there is no wonder that we're not seeing too many Outlaw rogues. But despite this, Corruption has helped Outlaw with their damage issues, playing with raw den weapons and full gushing, this can make CC heavy Outlaw rogues pack that extra punch. The only real times that we've seen Outlaw is in some very niche situations as a counter in 3v3 using Spike but Outlaw is starting to see some more resurgence in 2v2 as a fun alternative to assassination. Still on the topic of Rogue, our next spec is Sub Rogue. Sub is actually seeing a resurgence of play now with targetable corruption. As we all know, Sub has the mechanic of using its stealth abilities like Cheap Shot and Ambush in combat thanks to Shadow Dance. While assassination is all about high consistent damage, Sub brings some of the most insane bursts. Having a ton of modifiers like Dark Shadow, Find Weakness, and Master of Shadows means that during their Shadow Dance, Sub can really pump out bursts. Why we're seeing more Sub Rogues recently is thanks to the Corruption Vendor. Subtlety is unlike the other two Rogue specs and wants as much mastery as they can get, which flat out buffs your Eviscerate damage, resulting in some ridiculous numbers. Sub, of course, also brings some of the best lockdown and CC in the game, having the ability to consistently use their Cheap Shot, Sap, and added mechanics like Shadowy Duel, enabling you to extend those CC chains even longer. What really helped out Sub Rogue, though, is also its major drawback. Their lack of any real consistent damage results in them committing all of their burst inside of stun locks, and we all know the fiasco that versatility and conflict major resulted in it being almost troll stunning your kill target. So thanks to the corruption vendor and high amounts of versatility, paired up with conflict and strife means sub just isn't as popular as it could be. However, players are still finding success. Compositions like double DPS with a hunter or mage in 2v2, RMP, and even Ret Rogue Age Pala have all reached the highest ratings, proving that if you don't like the brute force of assassination, sub can offer more methodical and setup-based alternatives. Alright, so we've all seen and encountered tanks in Arena at some point. Well, usually we don't cover them, but as this is a niche video, we've got the opportunity. Guardian Druid, Blood DK, Prot Warrior, and even Brewmaster Monks have all had their time to shine. But now it's time for the Prot Paladin. Their toolkit allows for them to be useful even despite tanks as a whole being gutted thanks to the extra damage they all take. This added damage that they take is countered nicely by their mastery. A Protection Paladin's mastery increases their block chance as well as reducing the damage that they take inside of Consecration. It also increases their attack power, and thanks to the talent Holy Shield, Protection Paladin can also block spells. Despite lacking some in the damage department, Protection makes up for it in utility, offering unrivaled off-healing thanks to the Hand of the Protector talent, and their strong baseline flash of lights as well as strong defensive cooldowns for both themselves and their team with abilities like Guardian of the Forgotten Queen, Blessing of Spell Warden, and even Hand of Sacrifice. Defensive utility is not all that a Protection Paladin brings though. Thanks to the same interaction Holy Paladins have with Fist of Justice, Protection Paladins can get their stun on an extremely short cooldown. Pair this up with their obnoxious silence from Shield of Virtue, and you can see why Prop Paladin is the last tank standing. We've also all been on the receiving end of a team using a Gladiator's Spite against us. Well, that's a reality Protection Paladins are not familiar with. 
as they not only have freedom and bop. Thanks to the talent hallowed ground, anyone who's inside Consecration is immune to slows, and thus the spite will not stack. Protection doubles up as an aggressive healer in 2v2 and works well with classes bringing high sustain like Demon Hunter or Death Knight, while also having some rank 1 viable compositions in 3v3 when paired up with either a Demon Hunter, Windwalker, or Death Knight, and a Resto Shaman or Disc Priest healer. Our next spec is one that we're for the most part familiar with but has dropped heavily out of the meta. Enhancement Shamans offer a melee alternative to their elemental counterparts who just prefer to cleave. Enhancement has struggled as of late due to how easy they are to kill, being a melee who wants to be going toe to toe but has the drawback of male armor and limited defensive means enhancement struggles defensive wise, bringing all the utility of an elemental shaman versus casters paired with extremely high damage means they are great at tunneling down healers and casters alike. Abilities like Ascendance and Shamanism pair up great with other high burst melee such as Warriors, giving you the ability to tunnel down people with ease. With the addition of Targetable Corruption, some of Enhancement's weaknesses have been ironed out as you can now stack versatility and be a lot more durable. So expect to see a lot more of their flagship composition Turbo Cleave, which is of course when paired up with an Arms Warrior and Mistweaver Monk. Our last addition to this list is going to be Frost Mages. We are all familiar with the strengths of Frost, having an abundance of slows, novas, and just generally hard to play against as any form of melee. Well, Frost has been out of the picture for some time purely due to just how overwhelmingly strong fire is right now. Just because you don't see something often, it doesn't mean that it's bad. Frost is used by many rank 1 mages as a counterpick against melee compositions in a lot of the same caster cleaves that you would see a fire mage in. Fire does insane damage if left free and during its burst windows during combustion, but if trained doesn't bring too much, whereas Frost has consistent damage. Burst damage and a lot more durability due to its kiting. Not to mention it's great when paired up with Destro Warlocks as you give them a much easier time connecting to targets that tend to pillar hug. And as we all know, pillar hugging against a frost mage standing in blizzards and orbs is a death sentence. So if you're a mage maining fire, maybe give frost a try in some situations as having it in your back pocket will greatly help in certain matchups. And that's going to do it for our top niche PVP specs for patch 8.3. We hope you enjoyed this different type of video showcasing some of the lesser represented specs. And remember, just because something isn't seen often, it doesn't mean it's not viable. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.